good morning. I hope you're doing well. It's good morning for me. Hello to you. Uh, this is Ian's off to the market, which is up the road. So he's just come to collect it because uh, we are the second day of selling fish at a market. Yesterday went well. We I think we had 10 pieces left at the end of the day, but those 10 were probably probably sold last night, I would think. Um, and then you can see how busy the market is. And off it goes. One man. And then Campurida, you might have just seen in the shot, he's um, just, he delivered some substrate this morning for the maggots, and, which is fantastic. And then Maria's down there at the moment. I, didn't, I haven't shown you the BSF yet. It's um, not doing as well as I would have hoped. <laughs> it's like, it feels like the perpetual story of the BSF. Um, and I would say we've worked out some technical issues that we had around temperature and our water and... Um, patching and all that sort of stuff and now we just need to get the right people uh, doing it so current plan is Sam who, who you've met is he's uh, you know he's got a, a, a degree um, and so he's going to help us out I think with that <laughs> um, so he's going to uh, Paulson's mum Sorry, just saying hi to her uh, He's going to help us out, I think, with because he's quite technically minded. So he's got sort of that background in the science that we need. Um, and then, and also, the uh, the main thing is probably more to do with consistency of actually turning up to work. Um, uh, some staffing issues, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but it's not been that straightforward. So, um, yeah, we're going to be able to do that, I think, with Samuel. And he's got capacity because he's... Um, not 100%. Well, he's at the farm, uh, but we are still sort of growing in that section, so with the hatchery and things, so we've got a bit of capacity. So gonna, the plan is to put him on this, uh, and then he will help us to get this up and rolling because um, we need to in ma massively increase the amount of larvae we're producing, um, which is shouldn't be that difficult, and I reckon in a month's time we could get there. Well, it's good to see the grass. I don't think I've appreciated this, but the grass is all back here, which is great. And then hopefully this part will get grass as well. And this is the bike with the collection of the, the waste. Um, that's, that's come. And there's a... Uh, I'm not wearing the right flip-flops for this. Um, but this is manure. You see it? We'll see it smells, but... Well, it's. I think actually some of that is from a slaughterhouse. So there's a local slaughterhouse, and when you kill cows uh, and goats, you obviously have all the stomach. It's called green waste, all the stomach um, food, and cows have all stomachs, as you know. Um, not true stomachs, but they are basically areas in the body where the grass and whatever they're eating is stored, and then it gets broken down because grass has got a lot of cellulose. Um, there's any specific bacteria that break them down, so that's why cows have that many chambers in their body. They go through different processes, different batches of bacteria break it down, and then eventually it can digest it. So, anyway, there's a lot in there. Um, you can't do anything with it, um, and get when you're butchering the the animal, um, all of that comes out as waste and it has to be cleared, and there's a lot of it. Um, and then they were paying someone to take it away, um, but now actually we just collect it for free. So, and this is makes really, you know, it's been pri partly digested, so it's really good for BSF because some of the work's already been done, so they can access the nutrients in it. We don't want it to go 100%, so with, if you're going for a manure composition, you would go 50 50 normally, 50%, um, so something like manure, and then 50%, maybe some green waste, just so you get a, a good balance of nutrients in there, you get the best yield from your BSF. So yeah, so that's that, and I'm not sure what's in this one, not looked yet, but I suspect it's, um, is it vegetable? Oh no, more manure, perfect, that's, that's great. Um, and then I think, I wonder if, it's probably been moved already, it's happened, this looks fairly clean, but I think that's the vegetable waste from the market, so some of that's come down already, so maybe over there, um, and then uh, over to the DSF turning into a longer video. I was just going to say hello to you and then I'm going to show you this. But um, Here we are with the uh, frass. I've done some more printouts of um, the life cycle. So when we have visitors, we've got quite a few. Obviously, this is fairly new innovation, BSF. So 
No, everyone knows everything, so we've got the it's upside down. Life cycle. We did have one over there, it was paper, but of course it got wet. Um, that's the life cycle you're looking at. This couple there, because the, the numbers do change depending on um, your production method, your your, your um, temperatures, your humidity, the things like that. So there's a range there, and then it, it changes there. So adults, eight to nine days. Adults, lifespan, five to eight days. Different figures. Um, but we find that as well. It's, it is definitely a range. And then here, you see the eggs and the flies, the maggots, and then a little bit about the frass. Um, we've got our, our machine here. And that clicking you might be able to hear is a is a device that keeps away vermin. Just some clicks. Um, then there's a high frequency noise as well. And then the maggots are in the bays. Um, these are bags of frass that we've got, so we can sell that. Really potent fertilizer. Um, we're working them at, uh, on a little trial to get that up and running. This is uh, a bay with. I think it's just frass, but I haven't checked. So, so yeah, things are going all right. The, let's have a look if we've got any pre-pupa. There was some coming out of here yesterday. And I think they've been collected, possibly. Um, and um, then this, yeah, this manure, this has been freshly added. You can see it's green. It won't, it won't be long before it's been digested. Um, so there's no, there's a, there's a uh, pupa there, and then maggots I think are in this one. So they are progressing. It's just there's not as much as there should be, uh, which is disappointing. Um, but like I say, you've got to look after them. You know they have a very short life cycle. So if you're not around to carry it on, you'll get some. You know there's enough of them that you'll get some success but you're not going to get the you're not farming unless you're actually actively involved in it um, let me take you in here and you can have a look how things have changed it's very wet at the moment it's been I've had a great two days because it hasn't rained and i've been told it's been raining horrifically um it rained last night but it's perfect for us because if you're trying to sell fish outside it's hard to work if you try to catch fish it's hard to work so Oh, you can see, this is good action. There's some, there's some heat in here. Um, you can see them moving around quite a lot. They're doing mating dances. You can see them chasing each other, so um, that's quite exciting. Um, and then the, uh, the, it's quite changed quite a bit, so some of these plants, um, I don't quite know what's happened. This one doesn't look too healthy, but the rest look quite good. This one obviously died, this one's died, but quite a lot of them are still going. Um, we do have ants, um, which is okay. This, uh, we had um, Deo came over yesterday when we were showing people around, and uh, he put some ash down there, so that's a way of stopping them from coming up. The ants aren't a problem. I don't think these are biting ants either, but I guess... I don't think we've seen them do anything with uh, BSF. That's what we care about, because... Uh, we would be bothered about that, but we don't want to spray anything in here. And then this is a huge tub of mostly hatched. Oh, look, there's one fly that's just emerging. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Move. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Hard for me to see on camera. There it is. There. Can you see him? See him or her? He's probably just hatched, so I don't bother it too much. But if I you can tell if it's a male or a female by the tail. I think forked tails are males, if I remember correctly. Oh, look, that one's just hatched. Perfect. It's still got its case. How cool is that? You know, there's loads of them hatching out from here. You see them struggling through. Yeah, this is exciting. I don't think I've seen them emerge in such numbers before. Um, and then, of course, on the side of the uh, fabric. There's a good, it feels like a good, I don't know the temperature, we've um, gone through a couple of thermometers. This one I think is broken. This one, maybe just need to check the, the battery. Uh, but things like that are important. One thing we found out, I found a very useful chart. Uh, I'll try and, I'll, maybe I'll, 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 um, 
I'll see if I can find it a bit later and show it to you briefly. But basically, the chart has all the temperature. Someone did a trial on different feeds at different temperatures, and it's the survival rate of um, eggs, prepupa, pupa, and flies at different temperatures. And 37 is the sweet spot, 37 degrees Celsius. 40 degrees, and you get a massive drop off in mortality. So I think it was like only 5% of eggs survive at that temperature. Um, and I think for a while that was part of the issue. We were getting too much heat in here. Now for the flies, that should that's fine because we've designed it so that if it's too hot, they can move into this section, which is much cooler. It's uh, water comes in, evaporates. Um, there's a breeze coming through. This part where the plastic is hotter, and that's deliberate because it, this part of Uganda doesn't get quite hot enough for that optimum breeding breeding condition. Um, that's what we're trying to recreate. But of course, the pupa and prepupa and eggs can't move. So what you're going to do? You're just going to cook and <laughs> basically cook. So these prepupa are fine to be in here for now, um, but they do they should be moved out when it gets hotter towards the end of the day. And then the eggs, of course, need to be harvested daily. Now most of the eggs are laid. Oh look, look at all these eggs. How exciting! Um, you can see them all. I'll try that a bit further away. See the eggs there. Uh, this is what I mean. The person attending this is supposed to, is supposed to have a. Oh yeah, they've put the date on here for some reason. I don't know why. But there's no um, weight. There's supposed to be a weight of the cardboard, so you know how many grams of eggs. Um, and the eggs are supposed to be collected first thing in the oven. So they're just going to sit here and cook potentially. Um, there's some, I think there's some eggs there. Yeah, some eggs. Where are they? My camera work. I've actually forgotten how to do this. Um, and there's eggs here. So there's eggs all over the place, which is great. Let's just check this container. Uh, and one clutch of eggs. So one clutch is what a female would lay. There's eggs here as well. Um, that is between 500 and 1,000 eggs. Um, so you, that's a huge amount of potential if you think about it. Now, of course, not all of those are going to survive. And, and in insects, they have a sort of philosophy, more is better. So they just produce, it, most in, all insects, just vast quantities of production because um, survival rate's so low, which makes sense. That's why there's so many of them. Um, but they have to produce a lot. Um, so of those 500 to 1,000 eggs, you maybe, even if you get 50, say it's 500, lower range, and you get 50% survival rate, which is still not great. Um, or even if you've got the 5%, which we were sometimes getting, I would suspect, 5% um, of 500 is 25, right? Yeah, I think so. 25, 25 individuals from one. So your growth rate is phenomenal. Um, so there's potential there, even if you're doing terribly. Um, and then, of course, if you increase that to 500, 50% survival, then you're at 250 individuals for the next generation. So you're, you know, and even if you take 200 of those individuals and feed them to your fish, which is what you're trying to do, maybe some of them, maybe half of them die, you end up with 125 maggots. Um, you take 100 to the, to the farm and you keep 25 for your next generation and you still have the same rate. It just keeps going. Um, and so as long as you don't have complete failure, then you should be okay. But we have had uh, some challenges and like I say, the, we're not quite there yet. But I mean, there's still quite a lot of flies in here um, and it looks quite nice and green and bushy. Um, I'm just gonna come out now. But progress is being made. Oh, I've just lost the fly. Oh, actually this is a house fly, I think, but judging by the way it's buzzing around. Um, so definitely seeing progress but we just need to keep pushing on because the ultimate goal is we have, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 kilos of maggots being produced a day, maybe 50 kilos. Um, that's a lot of maggots. You need a lot of flies, so we're not at that point yet, but we are getting there. Right, so sorry for this very long video. That can be a, maybe, <laughs> Maybe this will be a standalone video. We'll do a, a, an experiment. What does a single take video look like? Um, but yeah, that's the BSF brief 
overview of how we're doing um, and uh, stay tuned to follow for more like and subscribe all those things because we are close to hitting uh, monetization which would be great another source of income for the farm so we'd appreciate your we appreciate your support and if you're watching this and you like what we do just subscribe keep watching and you can help us because then we can generate a bit of income which will come directly to the farm so thanks very much um, and appreciate your support. See you on the next one.